So I believe diabetes persists because how it's defined. Diabetes is a state or condition in which you're unable to maintain your blood sugars, okay? You start developing high blood sugars. Now, what's interesting is between 1979, 1997, normal fasting was below 140 milligrams per deciliter. And the way they diagnosed diabetes was this. If you have blood sugars greater than 140 milligrams per deciliter, on two separate occasions, you were a diabetic. Then in 1997, they changed how they diagnosed diabetes. So anything greater than 126 milligrams per deciliter, fasting glucose, was considered diabetes. So overnight, millions of people were not now diabetic. So if you're a diabetic or a pre-diabetic, or you want to avoid diabetes, you must know what normal blood sugar is, okay? It's between 70 and 85. And yes, it can go up to 90, but right in this range, is this, this is where you want it right here, between 70 and 85 milligrams per deciliter when you're fasting. So there's an interesting study, I'm gonna put a link down below, 2,000 men that revealed that if your sugars are over 85, it increases your risk of dying from a heart attack by 40 percent, okay? So we want to keep your blood sugars right around 85 or less, okay? That's the ideal scene. Right now, worldwide, we have 14 percent of the population on planet Earth diabetics, okay? And pre-diabetes is, is much, much higher. So sometimes people have this idea that, oh yeah, my blood sugars are below 140, so I'm okay. I can just, I'm not diabetic yet. Oh yeah, I'm a pre-diabetic, so I can just keep doing what I'm doing, right? So here's what you need to know. You have this pre-diabetes, right? Where you're going into diabetes, okay? Your blood sugars maybe are between 100 and 20, 125. But here's the thing. If your blood sugars are between 85 and going up to 100, this would be considered subclinical. Kind of like the it's like gradually going into this pre-diabetes, which will eventually going into actual diabetes. So anything over 85 is not good. Diabetes is a condition of high blood sugar. So for those of you that are new to my uh, channel, you must realize that to correct this, you must get the sugar out of the diet and the carbohydrates. But that's not what is recommended according to the American Diabetes Association, the expert on diabetes, the authority on diabetes, okay? So I wanted to show you what they recommend. It's very fascinating. All right, avoid or cut back on regular soft drinks and juice. Now, notice how they say they give you the option of cutting back. I mean, come on, if you have prediabetes or even if you have blood sugars in your 90s or you're diabetic, you shouldn't be cutting back. You should be completely and utterly avoiding sugar of all kinds, okay? Choose a low calorie snack such as popcorn. First of all, on the, on the glycemic index, popcorn is way too high. It's gonna turn into sugar, it's gonna spike your blood sugars. So they're recommending a low calorie. What does ha calories have to do with it? There's no link between eating more calories and causing diabetes. It's the type of calories that you're consuming. It's the sugar and the carbohydrates. Next one, include at least one vegetable every day. One vegetable? Uh, they're saying one serving, which is like one cup. No, you need to do a lot more because you need the potassium to help fix the insulin resistance, which is always involved in type 2 diabetes and many times in type 1 too. Next one, be careful with salad toppings. The calories can add up fast. Again, they're focusing on the calories. What about the carbs? Choose fruit instead of cake pie cookies. Well, that's better, but why even add fruit in there? Because fruit is high in sugar. Eat smaller servings of usual foods. They're not telling you to necessarily change your diet too much on this one. Just eat smaller servings of the junk that you're eating. When eating out, share your main course with a friend or family member because of the calories, right? Eating too much. All right, next one. Be mindful of how much fat you use in cooking. Why are you even talking about fat? Fat has the lowest response on blood sugars. It doesn't trigger insulin. Okay. And by the way, 
for this, for when you see in the media where they say that, oh yeah, high fat diet causes diabetes or prediabetes or insulin resistance, uh, those uh, studies were based on mice, uh, which really did not consume a pure fat diet or a high fat diet or a keto diet. They were consuming high fat and high carbohydrates at the same time. Okay, so you can ig pretty much ignore any of those studies. All right, avoid foods high in saturated fats like butter. Again, no, no, you want to eat more butter if you have diabetes. Use healthy oils such as canola, which by the way is GMO, olive, okay, that's good, and vegetable oil. Like what? Like what kind of vegetable oil? Corn oil, soy oil, which is high in omega-6 fatty acids, which will increase insulin resistance, inflammation, and it's GMO. Okay, start with one meat-free meal each week by trying plant-based proteins such as beans, or lentils in place of meat. Wait a second. Meat doesn't cause cancer, uh, especially if it's grass-fed. Um, so again, they're not talking about the most important thing you need to avoid. They keep switching to the, to the meat thing and the fat thing. Okay. Eat lean meats such as round or loin cuts or chicken without skin. Again, no, no, we need the fat. The more lean um, proteins you consume, the higher uh, you are on what's called the insulin index. If you don't know about that, I'm going to put a link down below. An insulin index is the non-carbohydrate foods that affect insulin. Okay, The glycemic index is all the carbohydrate foods that stimulate blood sugars, but you also have the insulin index. And lean protein okay, spikes insulin more than fattier protein. Interesting. We want to keep things low on the insulin scale. Next one, cut back on processed meats that are high in fat and sodium. Again, it's, it's not the fat, okay? And it's not the salt per se. It is the carbohydrates, okay? Eat fewer and smaller portion sizes of desserts and treats, such as ice cream, cake, and cookies. Try saving these for special occasions. Well, why, why do we even allow people to consume it at all? And also realize this, if you consume just a small amount of uh, a dessert, you're going to be hungry for it one hour, okay? Because the carbohydrates will start increasing hunger because of the insulin spike. So this is why diabetes is persisting, okay? So you want to know normal. You want to keep your blood sugars right here. You need to keep. You need to actually get a blood uh, glucose testing kit and keep checking it and change your diet until you can get it within this range right here. I put a link down below of the diet that I'm going to recommend. And if you're a diabetic and you're trying to get your blood sugars down and you've had diabetes for a long, long time, you might not be able to get it down here, um, but get it as low as you can and make sure that you follow the plan I'm recommending so you can lessen the complications. All right. Thanks for watching. So I want to thank you for being here and watching my videos. If you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and do so so you can stay informed of future videos.